Star Commander Jaden, keep scouting ahead. We are picking oh, up yeah. activity at the market. Oh yeah. We're finally playing some clans Investigate here. Investigate and report back. Just drop into this it first mission. Jordy probably saw in the uh, in tutorial slash, you know, drop trailers clear. of the game. So we're playing Preparing through it. Not really much uh, exciting here you can do. Changing your mechs doesn't really make sense a lot of this we part just because you're basically loaded out, can't do Have much with. Those drop so we're just going to go ahead and uh, play with what we got. Let's see how it goes. It. Austin, set up a perimeter. Watch for hostiles. Half. Drop right Hostile in the mission. Spotted. One thing I will say oh boy, missiles. One thing I will say is uh, that is awesome about this game is how the machine gun sound. Yeah, baby. You got my attention. Oh, yeah. That was my first. Like the auto cannon and the PPC were a little underwhelming, but hot damn, the machine gun sound good. <clears throat> and the game looks awesome too, right? I mean, even yeah, just every like the environment looks incredible, really good. We are inside. The interiors have been stripped completely. Even the reactor cores are gone. Keep us appraised, Star Commander. Jaguar Actual. We have visual on some kind of You mean outpost. apprised? And armor Oops. Hostile terminated. Thanks are a little stronger than uh, they were in Mercs, it seems like. Oh. The guy's going for a little uh, a little flight. Spider. Copy on your target. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. We don't want him able to do anything. Can't have him alive and well, can we? Target eliminated. Cool. Oh, there's a locust. Say goodbye, locust. Light him up, boys. Give me some, give me some salvage. That's the other thing too. You get salvage from down next. It's sort of just like general salvage. You can do stuff with it later. But there's no, you know, picking up parts and smashing your mechs together. A little different. A little different. I've definitely appreciated this game more as I have learned to not compare it to Mech Warrior Five Mercenaries. And just kind of give it its own. Let it be a game all on its own. It's a lot. It's a lot better that way. Cobalt Star, regroup at our mystery dropships. Ah, moving out. Sounds good. Whoops. Better not go out of bounds. Warning. Leaving mission area. Anyway, yeah. If I just kind of look at this game in and of itself, it's like, okay, this is good. It's a good game. I'm appreciating it. And I guess the way I feel about it is that it's better that it got made in the first place, right? Would you rather wait another year for them to add a bunch of features in the dark without giving people like real gameplay time with what, what's, a, what's present and available? Or just play what's here? <laughs> Whoops. And eat a nuke. Mm. Probably I would just, let's take the game as it is. and. Ideally, this is a good baseline that everything gets improved on. We'll see. We'll see. So sorry to keep you waiting. I was finishing my dinner. Locust. Hope you don't mind this little barbecue I had set up. Just for you. Actually, the Jenner needs to go first. Scum. Cobalt Star, get in there and assist. Save who you can. Oh, you don't think you didn't see me just do that right now, woman? On your target. Now, focusing on your target. 
Yeah, so the timing's a little different than, than Mercs, but you get used to it. Especially when you can do this. Awesome. And just like in merch, you kind of micromanage your team, make them make sure they're doing what they're supposed to, the or they'll let target. you down. <clears throat> it's best to have low expectations to begin with. Any goodies? Oh, there's another boy to kill. Commencing assault. New hostile detected. Commando. Who got that commando? I think. Scan mode engaged. Scan mode disengaged. New target. Throw out for me. Nice. Now, this whole like tactical view is kind of interesting because you can't control your mech while you're doing it, and it doesn't really like pause the game to give you time to think about anything. So you're sort of just like, oh, I guess I'm playing an RTS now, and you can sort of select your people and be like, hey, go right there, you know, and you sort of have to remember who's in what mech, and then. Oh yeah, also I'm piloting a mech while I'm doing all that. It's not particularly very useful. It's a cool concept though. Hopefully they do something with that. Anyway. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. But I haven't found it to be particularly useful. As opposed to just like issuing commands to my whole lands like I always do. Like you can issue like a, a a queue, like hey attack this person, then attack that person, then do this, and it's like bro. By the time you're doing that, you could have just I don't know shot at everybody and issued a command to your entire lance and killed them all. Anyway, <clears throat> be nice to see that get improved on. Looks like Valisex heavy hitters have taken the field. Oh, oh my full man. We should make quick work of them. Is one Valiser? So what I'm gonna You're do gonna here is Valisic let these uh Only wounded heavy boys go in and do the do the heavy lifting for me. <laughs> let them take some damage while I showcase more of this stuff. Okay, here's another thing I would think would be cool. You can't move these guys around into corners. Nor can you uh nor can you like group them, right? Like it'd be cool to say, all right, Mia and uh, Ezra are my long range guys. So I'm gonna, they're gonna be in a certain group, right? Just like you would in an RTS game. It doesn't really work that way. 
Yeah, I mean, I might. Do not let him take any more of our people. Why? What do I get? Why should I? I'm a capitalist, baby. I don't, I don't believe in your we space communism. So, just something to consider. I don't know. Like I said, half-baked, sure. But, like, do you want half-baked? Or do you want zero? I'm like, I'll take it as it is. And it will, and I, I believe it'll get better. Kill that rifle then. Come on boys, I count I'm counting on you. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, fire starter next. There he is. He's got one leg. Oops. Oops. Where is he? Boy, we did it. Jaguar actual, remaining hostiles are in retreat. Where are you going, Malasek? You're not done here. Sweetheart, I already got what I came for. You ain't worth any more of my time. Freeborn coward. Star Commander Jaden, you gave those surrats no less than they deserved. Oh, yeah. Secure his Atlantic Zone and sit tight. Let me have all that revenge. <clears throat> Some things don't change, baby. Alright. Nice. Oh, critical damage. Oh, well. What's cool about this also is that your mechs kind of get repaired just because you're, you know, part of this industrial war military complex, you know, that is the clans. And, uh,. Take 75 of these and 75 of those. I find that you end up using more of these as time goes on because I've played through this a little bit. Anyway, um, another cool thing is yeah, let's go. Actually, okay, here's another half bait concept, right? You get the barracks here and like. Oh, look, people have skills or whatever. But you don't really get to choose what they get, right? It's not like, you know, not like everybody gets everything and you just pick the ones you want them to be good at. It's it's just sort of like, hey, if you're Jaden, these are the only things you can do. You don't get extra missile range. You don't get extra, you know, like Liam here. Whoops. We'll come back to the back bay. But, uh, see, Liam has, like, cooldown and lock time, electronic warfare. Like, everyone sort of has a specialty, which, okay, makes sense, I guess, if you're talking about staying in continuity with the whole clan theme and your squad, your star, whatever. But for a video game, it's kind of lame. But fair enough, right? So we have people. She's good with ballistic. Good. So... Here's my mech. Oh no, he's not going to be repaired all the way by by the next mission. So this is the way it works, right? You have uh, the repair button here, and this gives you access to what you can do with your repairs, right? And I only have a certain amount of technicians. So two technicians are working on this guy, and two are on this guy, and two, one is on that guy, and one and three is on this one. So I only have ten, so the, they have to get divided up among these two mechs. So each mech can only have a max of, of two if every one of them is uh, damaged so you can see here I only get two and he has three so in order f see if I take one away he's only going to be 96 by the next mission and then I can add one for my Mac and be like oh good I'm at 100 we'll just let him be sad but instead we're just going to go buy a new technician and ladies and gentlemen we're back in business so everybody's at 100 and then of course you can upgrade your tech missions which means they get better at doing repairs so you can get more of them or they can get better at the repairs over time uh so x amount of you know upgrades per cycle or repair per cycle 
So we're going to purchase that. And yay, now we have better technicians and more of them. You have to spend your little influence points up here to do that. <clears throat> and uh, basically get those awarded as you level up. And get winning. Anyway, so while these are being repaired, there's another cool thing I didn't realize until I played for a while. Um, oh, sorry. So we're still in repair mode. We got to exit repair mode and go into our changing of loadouts. Now, this was weird, right? At first, I was kind of like, oh, this is lame. You can't change anything. So, like, locked. All these positions are locked. You can't actually, you know, for an Omni mech, you can't really do a lot of Omni stuff. So, there's less Omni in this than there is in mercenaries but it uh there's a method to the madness right so again you, you sort of have to play inside this idea that you are playing inside of the you know, the clan war machine right and you're just a you're just a grunt so you don't get a you don't get necessarily call the shots on how things are done in design and you're not sitting there making custom mechs sort of but what you can do is uh unlock specific omnipods right so if we want to say like oh let's change this whole omnipod well there's omnipod sets right so that's this thing which i didn't realize at first but there's a set so i now have my omnipod set and you know what i was starting with you know medium pulse laser srm and a missile system and two machine guns then i look at this one i'm like oh wait this has two er medium lasers in the torso another one on the arm and then an srm6 well cool that might be a better one for a different mission or whatever and you also kind of have to keep in track what the differences are between them. Sometimes one uh, Omnipod will have or will give more armor than others. And you don't really get to fix or change that base amount or that fixed armor. You can't remove armor and add armor like you can in Mercs. Which again, at first glance, you're like, well, that's dumb. I'm already uninstalling this. But give it a shot. It actually works out. Um, again, in its present form, it's fine. It'll do... You can have plenty of fun with it, but it is kind of lame. So you, instead of being able to customize and trick everything out the old way, it's just a different spin on, on being able to do that. So the way it works, again, you kind of keep track of like, okay, different Omnipods might have more or less armor, and you kind of just have to get a general sense. I really wish there was a way to, like, there was like total armor up here. You know, it shows the loadout, but it doesn't say this mech or this Omnipod has more or less armor. That'd be nice. Anyway, what's cool, though, is, again, once you unlock the set, you can take any one of the torsos, arms, legs, etc., head and center torso, and, and apply it to, let's say, the prime or this one, right? So if I take the alpha variant, um, I can take some of the prime. I could take the prime arm and stick it on the alpha right arm. And you can swap any one of these out for any of the other Omnipod sets you've got unlocked. So it's kind of cool. And you also have to look because a lot of uh, some of the mechs have sort of the same loadouts. It's just like the difference between a PPC and a large pulse laser. And it's like, well, I could have just changed that myself. But the hard points themselves aren't any different from one set to another, except for maybe like this arm is different, but this one has, you know, a, a ballistic hard point versus a missile. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So you just have to go and look through and, and figure out how you're going to mix and match your mechs. The best way I feel like doing it is saying, what do I want to do? Like, what do I want my Lance to be good at through this playthrough? Are we going to be brawlers? Are we going to be long range snipers? Are we going to be, you know, mixed, uh, super tactical using ECM and, you know, assigning roles to everybody and playing like, you know, real tabletop battle tech. You can kind of mess around with it, which I think is cool. If you look at it that way, then the Omnipod thing is actually kind of cool. But overall, eh, not as cool as it was in Mercs, but still gives you enough of that feel that you're like, all right, I'll, I'll roll the dice a different way, and uh, it's, still, it's still pretty fun. So anyway, enough of talking. Let's figure out what we're going to do this Viper. All right, so I got an Omnipod ERPPC. Nice. Flamer. That's the other thing, too. The, these, uh, if you look at the sets it doesn't show you like i mean it'll tell you if there's um heat sinks or whatever in each of those also you can't remove jump jets lane but uh it will tell you if there's a heat sink in that omnipod it doesn't again tell you the total heat cooling that you have in a mech or the 
speed or the armor. Like, that'd be nice if it was maybe doing some of those things with the Omnipod, but whatever. Uh, I don't think the speed changes with any of the Omnipods either, which is also kind of lame because, you know, changes swip swap swapping out your engine and making your mech go different speeds is part of the fun of this game. But hopefully, again, that comes down the line, whether through mods or otherwise. Okay, but see here, I got an ERPPC. That's a freaking ton of heat, and I don't see any, uh, I don't see any heat sinks for this variant, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that. What I really wanna do is something that will just punch people and do a lot of damage. Okay, so there's an LRM5, SRM6. See, this looks like a pretty decent loadout, and I'd probably just double down on SRMs, because I wanna get in a brawl, like a real brawler. Um, and then there's this variant with four machine guns. You know how much I love machine guns. I could just build this into like a clan fire starter with four machine guns and four flamers if I wanted. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, five flamers. Maybe I should. Maybe I should get retarded. Actually, I kind of want to try that. Let's see that. Okay, you know, that'd be kind of fun. But my instincts are to say, get good with missiles. But of course, we're going to ignore that. <coughs> oh, no, we're not. See, that's the other thing. As you use the mechs, uh, you get mech XP, and you'll be able to unlock more variants with that. And you can also improve the chassis with uh, that mech XP later. But all you can do is really change like how fast it goes and how quickly the torso turns and other things that are basically... It's all mobility-based with the chassis improvements. Um, all right, so I have 300. So I can do anything that's a 3, a tier 3. Or 300 XP. So I'll do this. I will do. Okay, we're going to go missiles then. I was right. Sweet. Okay, well, let's go apply that loadout. Confirm. And now we can see, oh, it's still about the same armor as what it had before, which is more than these other mechs, right? Looking at 153, 150, 130, 209. It's about as high as it gets with the Kid Fox. So this is pretty well armored for uh, where we are in this stage of the game. But. It's not good enough for me. So I'm going to change it up. And let's see. Oh, another interesting thing here is that, like, pulse lasers, again, they still weigh two tons. They do the same damage as the ER medium, the clan ER medium lasers. But they also aren't as hot. They don't run as hot. 2.6 heat versus 4.8. I mean, this freaking ER medium laser is uh, it's a hot boy. So you kind of got to decide, do I want, you know, to get rid of two tons here, save two tons, but I'm probably going to have to add a heat sink. So I'm really only getting about a one ton saving if I swap those medium pulse lasers for an ER medium. And uh, the DPS on these is a little higher because they have a shorter cooldown. So half as much heat and quite a bit uh, faster cooldown. So... Uh, medium pulse lasers are good, but we want to save some tonnage, so we're going to go ahead and take a look here. Machine guns only weigh 0.25, so you don't save a ton by swapping those out. Um, let's see. All right, so the only one I have on the... Oh, okay, so yeah, instead of an anti-missile system, we could go with something that has more laser power. And I might just do that because... Oh, this is the base variant. I thought I switched it. Sorry, one second. Let's go with the new one. Apply. Didn't I do that? Did I not? Okay, well, I did now. I feel much better. Yeah, see? ER mediums. Good. And if we look at our heat behind my transparent face, uh, 1.4 cooling. Not a lot for eight points of heat every time I shoot those. And another... Uh, five points of heat every time I shoot that SRM-6. And of course we got the small lasers. So what I may do is switch all of these to ER small lasers, save myself some tonnage. See, oh, 1.75, baby, now you're talking. And uh, you're like, well, uh, hey, those only do five damage. Yeah, I know, but they are e they're extended range. So they go far enough for what we want to do. And what I really want to do, uh, let's take a look here. 
Oh, whoops. So here's where we go and we can actually select individual on lead pods uh, across the board here. And the only real difference is with this C variant where I get a flamer, but uh, I'd have to unlock that first, which I don't. So what about the head? Anything different on that? Nope, all the same across the board. Okay, what about if I switch this out? What do I get? Oh, we just did that, that's right. It's between that and the uh, anti missile system, and we were going to swap that anyway. And of course, uh, this LRM5, only one ton, but could we pack? And instead of like the uh, streak, which is a lock weapon, and I do like it because you know, good amount of damage, the the uh, regular SRM6 that you aim uh, does quite a bit more damage. Well, two points more. Of course, you got to be good at aiming at that point. So, also less heat. So I may just go with that, and it takes up less space. But let's just go ahead and see what else we got here. Because I'm going to add some armor to this guy, too. All right, streak. And where is the streak ammo on this guy? Is it up here? Yeah, okay. Cool. Well, then... Yeah, let's swap that out. We're going to go with two SRM6s, I think. The streak is good. Uh, I would say if you have the extra tons, I mean, three tons, but you can literally get two SRMs for the weight of one SRM streak. And uh, I'd rather go that way and get myself another double heat sink. So we're going to do that. We're going to make ourselves a little brawler here. A little brawling machine. Now... We'll talk about how you add armor here in a second, but basically, you again, you can't remove armor from the existing frame, but you can add armor pods in 0.25 ton increments, which is kind of nice, kind of cool. That was a, if you're you know comparing again uh, to to Mercs, you can't actually add um, a specific weight amount. You just have to like increase a specific area one at a time, and so. This does kind of streamline that whole thing. Kind of interesting. Again, I like the better the other way, but this is, if you embrace this as a standalone version of doing it, it's pretty good. It's still cool. So let's get rid of that ammo and put in correct ammo, which is what we want. Just regular old SRM ammo. One there. And get rid of that streak ammo. We'll do one more there. We still have two tons though. So probably what we're going to do is, because you only get 150 rounds per ton. So that's the other thing. Ammo is a lot more something you got to think about in this as opposed to Mercs, where the tons had like twice as much ammo in them. <coughs> with missiles anyway. Ballistic weapons are better. You actually get way more ammo with a ton of ballistics in this. Something to consider. But what I probably will do is just get another ton of SRM ammo and then add a heat sink I think is what we need so we have three tons and a heat sink and 300 armor is good enough right we could skip that extra ton or maybe go with a half ton of ammo and then do 0.25 on each arm um, just to or on this arm and this torso to kind of keep us a little more protected but we're probably not going to need that considering this has enough armor that's like good enough for not having all the Omni pods unlocked, because if I did, I'd probably do something different. But we'll go ahead and, and save that. Now, what this is going to do is it's not charging me to like move stuff around. I have to buy these things from the marketplace because I don't already have them in my inventory, I believe. Um, and so that's, I think, some of the uh, shifting stuff around. Maybe that's what it's costing. Anyway, there's always a little bit of cost when you when you change things, but it's not like not like in Mercs, where it's like. You know, a million C bills just to put some jump jets on something. Interesting. All right, so what we can now do is test it out. So let's go to the old sim pod here, which is in the barracks. Again, strange, but that's, I mean, it kind of makes sense that that's where it'd be located. But from a UI perspective, like it needs to be its own, you know, like in the mission central, whatever. That would make a lot more sense to me. But anyway. Let's go ahead and test this guy out, see how it is, and then we'll go do a mission with it.
What am I doing? Oh yeah, duh. See, again, it's like, even though I know where it is, I'm still like going intuitively thinking it should be somewhere else. All right, let's go see how hot this gets. The other thing I've noticed too <clears throat> is that the weapon groups don't tend to save for whatever reason from mission to mission. Uh, I don't know if that was like intentional or if they just hate us, but that's kind of how it goes. <coughs> Alright, we're gonna make that like this. Let's rock and roll, baby. Let's go see what it would be like if I'm fighting a locust. New hostile Oops. Detected. Oh, wow. Locust. See, three ER small lasers? Boom, that lights that guy up real quick. Right see you later, you little jerk. What about this tank? Oh, whoops, I pounded that rock real good, though. Nice. Oh, VTOLs? Yeah, baby. One shot in them. I'm just always shooting willy nilly. You know, it is uh, definitely going to overheat at some point. But that little volley there would have uh, probably saved me. And in between as we're in, I mean, I can fire these almost indiscriminately and not worry too much about heat. Target it's the lasers that are going to be holding that up. All I do is fire master rems. Whoa, and miss completely because I step over a rock. Yeah, see if I'm firing one at a time like that. Destroyed. Not bad. I can probably survive that way. And it will, I'll be able to kill what I need to kill. So not worth switching to get heat sinks. I think we're good with this, so we're going to go ahead and save that one and abort simulation. We'll go and uh, take a look at some of these other mechs, but yeah, there you go. That's a general overview. Some of my thoughts going into this. I, so far, like this game. It has been really cool, so long as I'm not comparing it to Mercs and being like, I want that same experience, but here. Like, I wanted to just do Mercs, but with clan mechs. Um, I think, I feel like that's where they're going to go with this at some point. You know, you'll be able to, like, they'll come out with V2 and you'll be on the Inner Sphere or whatever. And that'll be a DLC or maybe a new game or, you know, something in, in conjunction with this. But this format, this base game, the, the baseline, I think is pretty good to work with. Um, some of the visual effects with the auto cannons and the, and the PPCs are a little bit weak. I kind of wish... Things were a little bit more like Mercs. I feel like it's a little, in some cases, too polished. When I'm stomping around in a mech, it's just very like insulated and quiet. And I want, I like that sort of like trash can dumpster sounding feeling that Mercs gave you, where you're just piloting a bucket of bolts, going to battle. You know, it's 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 high tech and low tech all at once. It's sort of uh, I feel feels a lot more uh, safe and maybe like soft. You know, the, the impacts don't feel as hard. Nothing feels as as uh, damaging. You know, I don't see... There's no red lights, like, going beep, beep. You're getting shot. Like, there's... It's a little bit less uh, visceral, I guess. But that can all be forgiven and fixed with mods. Again, the baseline, would I rather have this than wait a year to get something that's even more with all the stuff that we'd hoped for? Uh, nah, I'd rather just have this. Let's go ahead and play it. It's fine. Good enough for now. Uh, certainly it will get better, but I am having a good enough time that so long as I, again, so long as I don't compare this so much to Mercs, I'm, uh, as a standalone game, hell yeah. And yeah, we're filthy clan scum, but that's okay. You know, that can be forgiven too. Hopefully somewhere in the storyline that gives you an option to be like, I'm going to be a mercenary and go kicking heads all on my own or something, or I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, for now, so far so good. I'm going to keep playing.